Week one of Zero to SD-WAN Hero begins by focusing on building our lab environment. We've built a root certificate and a root certificate key in the previous section of this module. Now the time is going to come for us to start focusing on implementing the controllers. We're going to be building our vManage, our vBonds, and our vSmarts. Then we'll move on to the vEdge devices that we're going to be using in the lab. Now, as a direct result of this, what we want to be able to do is make this as simple and as streamlined as possible. And what I've done to accomplish that is I have created a file that we're going to use for the purposes of applying configs. You'll notice in week one, we have the idea and the configuration of hands-on deployment using our SD-WAN architecture. This is going to be where we're going to build our devices. And you can note right here in the output, I have a file or a directory that is going to allow us to be able to download all of the files that we're going to need to proceed through this section. I'm going to go ahead and what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on files used in week one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and download and now I see all of my files, and what I want to do is I'm going to download. Again, this is just testing to make sure that this is going to be functional for everyone. I'll go ahead and say close, and we should have a file down here called week one's SD-WAN files. I'll go ahead and show that in my folder, and I'm going to right-click, and I'm going to extract all. We will use these files in order to be able to configure our devices. Now, class is going to begin with focusing on the vManage. That's the first controller that we always want to bring up and make sure that we have operational because it's going to be our point of control. It's going to be how we're going to be managing all of the devices in our infrastructure. So what I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and initiate a secure CRT session to that device. And what we'll do is from that session, we will begin the configuration. It's going to start with something as simple as formatting the hard drive that we're going to be using for the data section on the vManage, and then copying, pasting the configurations in place, and then validating that we can get to the graphical user environment. Let's see what that looks like. So we will begin by accessing the devices in question, which means I need to initiate a browser session to my host. I'm going to say 10.1.254.1. Again, that's the IP address that I'm using in my lab. Yours may and probably will differ. I'm using the credentials of admin and Eve, and I'm going to use native console because using native console is going to allow me to be able to leverage my secure CRT config to make copy and paste easier. I'm going to go ahead right now and I'm going to click on this. And what I'm going to do is I want to make certain that my secure CRT is indeed clear. And we see that it is. All right, so all I'm going to do right now is I'm going to click on the vManage. We'll address the vManage in our config. And initially, what we've got to do is we've got to log into it. Logging into the vManage will give me access to the console. This vManage has never been configured before. So what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to go ahead and set up the drives that I was describing. It's just a wizard. So I will log in using admin, admin which is the default login, and we can see that we're presented with a series of hard drives that we're going to need to configure. The two that we have the choice of configuring is HDB and HDC. Notice that HDB is the 100 gigabit drive, so what we're going to do is that's going to be the one that we're going to choose to format, and I'm going to go ahead and say yes, that I want to accomplish this. Now, obviously, as a direct result of making this configuration, it's going to take some time for the vManage to prepare this drive. Formatting does not happen instantaneously, especially when you have something like 100 gigs. So it will take some time. We'll go ahead and edit that out in post. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take the next step, which is going to be to handle the copy-paste operation. 
we're not going to get too far ahead ourselves here because what ends up happening is if I try to log in right now, so if I come over here and I say admin and I try admin, which is the default password that we're going to be using, notice it's going to tell me authentication failed. That's because the services that are running on the vManage are not currently up and operational in the background. We're going to have to wait for it to tell us that the system is ready, and then at that time we should be able to log in. So we'll wait some more. You'll note now that the system is actually telling us that it is ready for access. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and plug that in. I'm going to come in and say admin, and I'll say admin. And what we should be presented with is going to be a blank configuration. You can see here it says vManage. It has no name. It doesn't have any of its functional baseline configuration. Let's address that. I'm going to open the file for vManage1 on my desktop, and I'm going to copy and paste the configurations into this resource. So to do that, I'm going to go into my downloads file, the one that we brought in. I'm going to go to week one, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to find vManage1, and I'm going to copy the entire process. So select all, and I'm going to say, I'll use right-click instead of using my keyboard. So I'll say select all, and we will say copy. Now all I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the vManage, and I'm going to say config, and I'm going to paste the contents of that directory into the vManage itself. I will say commit and quit, and this should apply the configuration. Now that this has taken place, I want to take the opportunity to kind of review the content. Bear in mind, we're executing a copy and paste operation without having to generate any of the information that is going to be applied to the device. That's a shortcut. I don't want you guys to have to deal with typographical errors or other problems, but I do want us to take the opportunity to take a look at the configuration that we applied. It's going to be in three sections. The information for the system the information for VPN0, which we'll later learn is going to be our transport VPN, and VPN512, which right now I'm not leveraging, although we will later in the course. VPN512 being the management VPN. So if I say show run system, and we look at the configuration for the system, please note that we gave it a host name. We gave it a unique system IP address. Think of that almost like a router ID. It has been assigned to a site ID of 255. It knows its organizational name. We gave it the identity of the V bond using a fully qualified domain name. And we have not brought those V bonds up and made them operational yet. So we'll validate all of this to make sure that we have all the reachability that we need when the time comes. And we can see that we have our AAA configuration, which is going to identify our users, specifically our admin user. And bear in mind, we're using the password of admin also. Next, I want to go through and I want to validate VPN0. In the instance of these resources, we're pretending that they're inside of AWS, Amazon Web Services. And as a direct result of that, we're going to find that we only have one transport, which is going to be internet-based, aka public. And then what we want to do is we want to make certain that we do have capability of being able to reach our gateway of last resort. So that is going to end up being a test that I can implement. I'm going to say show run VPN0, and we're going to see here that I do have the one interface of Ethernet 00. I've defined a DNS server. I'm running an IP address, and I am currently operating using my tunneling configuration, which means I'm going to be using, by default, datagram transport layer security tunnels. And just to make certain that nothing goes afoul in the lab, what I've done is I've configured it to allow all services on this interface. So SSH, SCP, all of those things should work. The interface has been no shut, and you'll notice that I have a static default route. I'm going to type show IP route, and what I'm going to do is I should see that route show up in my routing table. It is going to 10.0.0.1. Let's ping 10.0.0.1 and make certain that we have reachability. Bear in mind, in vManage, these pings will be continuous unless we set a specified count or we use Control-C to interrupt that test. 
The next thing that I wanted to call your attention to is going to be show run VPN 512. VPN 512 is pretty much blank. It just exists. You cannot delete it in a vEdge device. And VPN 512 services as our management VPN. Now, this has tested reachability, it's tested the identification, and it's tested the configuration of this device. And we assigned it an IP address of 10.0.0.101. What I want to do next is I want to access my jump box and I want to see if I can open a browser and connect to this vManage because it's going to be inside of the graphical user environment that's provided by the vManage that we're going to be implementing configuration, control, policies, security, everything that we're going to be called to do in the day-to-day -day execution of our jobs as SD-WAN subject matter experts. So when we take a look at what this is going to deal with, I'm going to open up a browser so again, I'm going to get into my jump box. And from my jump box, I want to open a browser. SDA rocks one, two, three. And I'm going to browse to that IP address. I'm going to open Chrome. And from Chrome, I'm going to go to the address of HTTPS 10. 0.0.101 and let's see if I am going to be presented with a login. I'm going to go ahead and choose advanced because we're using self-signed certificates and I'm going to go ahead and proceed even though the application is warning me that this is unsafe and we see immediately I'm presented with the login screen for the SD-WAN Viptela controller. Now, if you don't immediately get access to this, just wait a little bit because it does take some time for all of those services to load in the vManage. Later on in the course, I will walk you through the verification commands to take a look at some of the network management services like application services that are going to be hosting this access. So right now, all I really want to do is just log in and take a look at the graphical user environment for the very first time. To do that again, our credentials are going to end up being admin, admin, and we should see the user interface. We're going to play around and we're going to work a lot with this user interface. You're going to become very, very familiar with what it's going to show you, where it's going to show you, and you're also going to become familiar where to be in the graphical user environment when the time comes for us to implement these resources and these configurations. Now, we're not done. We have got to go ahead and get this device registered. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to handle that in another video. In fact, I'm going to break this one up into two parts because I don't want you guys to have to chew through tons and tons of information. So let's go ahead and stop right here. And what we'll do is we will pick up in the next video where we're going to talk about what's going to be involved with getting this user environment up and operational for the purposes of configuring other devices. I'll see you guys in that video.